Hello, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. We are looking at a Foundry VTT add-on module today called Simple Quest. Uh, it's another Ripper 93 one. Uh, so what you can see here is where I'm in the wiki. Uh, the reason why I want to draw attention to the wiki always, uh, especially for Ripper stuff, because there's so much more information in here. The documentation in Ripper's things are brilliant. So I'm um, obviously I only go over a limited amount of stuff but always visit the wiki come and see it now before we get into it though before i show you what it is how it works i mean you could probably take a guess it's about quests isn't it but it's not just about quests this is a premium module okay so this is a uh, join patreon uh, rippers patreon and then you've got access to the premium module so put that right out there first but this is one of those modules that could be the difference between you choosing to become a patron or not because you might go do you know what this is the solution i want it's worth it just for this one um and that tends to kind of happen with rippers ones you find a module and you go that's it i can build my entire core of the way that my game runs around this one thing um because it's just good stuff it's always solid it's always um you know kept up to date it's always being fiddled with <laughs> all the time so yeah visit the wiki it's all in here so there's lots of extra stuff we can do but you just want to know what it does don't you so let's get on with that then so i'm in one of my test worlds of course now i am in version 12 um this has simple quest has been around for a while so uh, it still does uh, work and is available for version 11 but it is updated for version 12 which of course is what i'm in and it's the only module i've got in only one i've got so everything you see is either version 12 the dnd system or this module all right come on get on with it mr golem all right so first of all I can press the J key like you do in, you know, most computer games and stuff, and I can bring up my quest journal. J again. It's gone. How easy is that? Uh, and I say I can, but it also works for the players as well. There is a limited amount of stuff they can see. Now, it's opened up immediately on the quest thing, but I'm not going to start there. I'm going to come over here. So across the top here, we've got quest, lore, timeline, map, my journal, meaning my journal, and then the party journal. Um, so we've got different headings here. I've just gone over to party journal to show you. And so this is automatically a journal area where the party can keep track of their stuff. So they can add on new pages. They can add on new categories. Um, they can edit them and they can do whatever they need to do, just like normal journals. But dear Lord, does it look nice? <laughs> it's it's just organizing a lot of those journals and stuff in a nice kind of um uh, you know one place in this journal thing so on the left here i just created a new section called party note i should have said notes on people and i've put johnny long legs in there and the players can go in and they can edit so here you're seeing the normal standard journal thing where well, they can go in and edit that. But actually it shows up here. Beautiful. So they have Johnny Long Legs. They know that Johnny likes apples and potatoes, preferably in the same pie. That's all they know about Johnny Long Legs. Of course, they may or may not choose to write stuff down. Uh, Melissa Bloodstone, they've met her as well. And of course, look, we can put an image in there. Um, now they can put the image in there or of course with the DM we can go in and edit that in for them she's not very bright but willing to help specifically useful for information about the other townsfolk seems to know everyone okay so party are like oh yeah if we need to know something about somebody Melissa's the person to go and ask so um, and yeah images and stuff and they can write as much as they like just with any journals which is perfect all right what about my journal then well it's similar and it's going to work in the same way but this is for me so i've got johnny longlegs in here he says oh he's actually he's neutral to the party generally doesn't really you know not particularly supportive but doesn't have anything against them however he loves timmy the halfling because timmy the halfling cooked him an apple and potato pie and hit a natural 20 on his cooking check it was like oh yeah absolutely best pie i've had in a very long time kind of thing and pretty much any reasonable request that timmy makes johnny longlegs is going to say yes and he's going to help out not the rest of the party necessarily he's quite neutral to them but he loves timmy the halfling so from a dm's point of view it's really useful to know those and remember those little notes and things like that and uh, you know and the rest of the party if they're not paying attention are like well hang on, why does timmy get on so well with him timmy's got a terrible charisma it's not about the charisma it's about the food <laughs> so it's just things you can slap in there and again of course editing this 
it's just like any other journal um, so you can insert images you know uh, let's just chuck that in as an example boom chuck that in there uh, and I've put it before the writing but uh, yeah there we go just chuck your images in whatever you need you can do that just editing journals so again so it's not giving us an awful lot extra right now it's just presenting it in a really nice way what about the map tab then let's have a look at that again it's nothing it's nothing magic that's different from the normal journal but dear lord it looks better doesn't it so again we can create our own extra maps um i didn't want to do that that's a secret i'm coming to that in a minute <laughs> um so we can create our additional maps in here again just like journal entries and i can find in my maps folder um let's stick in the clifftop observatory whatever i want to do and now i've got these other maps in here okay um nice place all my maps in one place where they want to be now what i accidentally revealed to you apart from the fact that i can zoom and zoom zoom in and zoom out you notice there's some icons at the top rest the top right um, where i can do things like uh, change the scale of it uh, enable fog of war uh, and things like that if i want to so we looked at a previous module didn't we about world explorer um, well we can put fog of war on here uh, and then we can reveal certain parts of the map as the players move across it uh, we can deliberately show that to the players uh, uh, obviously we can bin it and of course we can edit it if we want to so all journal oriented stuff but it's nice we've got that fog of war ability on here and built in yeah i've done it again uh go away thank you um i can write hold down right mouse button and drag across my map but i can put my icons on so you see i've got one down here called deadly shallows i've got one here the sailor's grave and i've got the overlook in here so anywhere i like i can click on this map left click because i have edit abilities and i can put a new marker on um Here be monsters, and I can choose any icon I like. Note, I can also upload my own icons if I want to. I can change the color. Uh, let's make that kind of a teal color. Um, in fact, I, I'm going to pop. Let's pop a skull in actually, and I can save that. And I've got now I've got my red skull over here. Here be monsters, um, and I can hold that down with the right button and move it to where I want to be if it's not in the right place nice now what happens with this beer mug here uh, all i did was click this button here and change the scale of it so now it's huge so you can do that if you want to you might not want to but you can if you want to um, which is really really nice and of course there's a box here for hidden um, so let's hide that and make it smaller so now we can see that that's hidden so from a DM's point of view, we can pre-prepare, because we know prep is really important, we can pre-prepare our map, put all of these things on. The players can visit here whenever they like, whatever the map it is we're using, um, and we can just reveal the various icons to them. Didn't want to do that. Uh, we can just reveal the various icons. There we go to them as and when they discover places or you know they hear about them whatever it might be so really nice little map feature on here um, that works like that it's just it's lovely isn't it it's just it's neat it's tidy it's organized um, so if i just come out of here for a second uh, and go to our normal uh, a normal journal area we can see that actually a lot of what we're looking at here is just normal journal stuff so at the bottom here uh, i can go to maps and here's my stormwreck isle map and here's my normal test map and this is how you would by default perhaps share it in a journal but it's got no pins on it we can't put pins on here in the way that we can with that yeah we can make it big so it definitely is taking the basic journal stuff it might be storing it in a similar way but then it's massively enhancing that and making it much more 
interactive, visually a lot more pleasing. Uh, and again, we're just opening this with J. All right, so we've, we've covered kind of like these three at the top here. Next one is Timeline. So once again, um, this is completely uh, editable. You can customize it and everything else. Um, we've got different events and stuff in here. We've got an hourglass down here, which we can click on to create a new event. So we can put in anything we want, uh, give it a label, give it a name. We can put a banner image on it. Um, we can edit its contents if we want to update some of the writing and stuff. I've just created it accidentally over there. It could be an era rather than an event. So notice under event, we've got this event box. If I click era, it changes it. Apologies, I need to sneeze <laughs> right in the middle of it. <laughs> uh, so professional. Um, and then, of course, we've got some of these global stuff. So we can we can put together, and here we go, no era start found because I didn't fill in that date. So it's going to force us to, uh, no year found, it's going to force us to do certain things to make sure it's a complete stuff. So I just created one here, the Dragon Wrath Devastation. Um, and... If I edit this, you can see I put in a foundry logo. I put in as the banner image. I gave it, so I gave it, you know, start of an era, end of an era, and I've popped that all in there. Um, and so it's given me this. So dragons say everything except the dwarves. You all too chewy. All right. So this is going to build a timeline here. So depending on your setting you may already have an extensive timeline. So if you pick something like Greyhawk or Forgotten Realms, there is already a massive extensive history that you could fill in here um, as a, a core resource. Now that's going to take an awful lot of time um, and you might choose just to look it up in other sources in other places, like, you know, Forgotten Realms wikis, example. Um, but also you could copy and paste some of that stuff over to build this yourself, give access to that, especially if you're running a longer campaign. Um, you know, you might want that information available because you know you're going to be playing in the same game world for a year, so why not have it filled out? Now, of course, if you've got a homebrew, you may not have that extensive history, but you can make some up. And, of course, you can add to that history as various parties complete various important quests and things like that. So, again, completely edit editable uh, and customizable. Uh, you can build it all out if you want to, or if you don't, it's up to you. All right, what's next, then? Next one is lore. So, um, this is what I mean about Ripper stuff, is under locations, there is Welcome to the Lore tab, uh, and he's giving you... Some information on here anyway um, so default we've got locations npcs organizations history and a beastery as well so that again it's basically on the back end it's just journal stuff but really nicely crafted uh, and i don't mean to make it sound like oh well there's ripper's not put much work into this one all he's done is make it look nice i don't <laughs> i don't mean that i don't mean that things like the map pins and stuff like that that's all extra um, but from our user point of view, it's sim it's quite simple to use. It looks great. It's much easier than fiddling around with all the different journals and stuff like that because it brings it all together. It's really, really clever. So, yes, we've got a Welcome to the Law tab, which tells you a bit about it is. And, and it's quite straightforward, I think, isn't it? You know, notable NPCs, notable organisations that we can put in here. Under the beastery, we can put things like I put ghouls in, you know. So, again, I can put an image in if I want to. I went with the default size of this image, probably should shrink it down a bit. But, of course, I can edit these at any time um, and, and change stuff if I want to. Um, because this just opens up into that standard page. But... Dear Lord, it looks nice. Uh, we can move them around as well. So if you've accidentally put, you know, oh, goals is not supposed to be in there. It's supposed to be in organisations. It's just moved it to organisations for us, uh, which is a little bit of an odd place for a goal to be. But there we go. Um, we also have, so open for players, so we can show it to the players. Uh, obviously, we can bin it. We can duplicate it if it's something similar. We can configure permissions directly from here as well. So all players are going to inherit the default stuff. And I want to say, actually, all of them can see this now. Okay, all players can see it's just changed this from being purple to being white. New law was revealed. Ghouls, 
So there's a notification to those players. Just want to check, actually. Did it say that in chat? It doesn't come up chat, but it does give you that pop-up. Um, so straight away, the players know, oh, something else is available in there, and they know that they can come in. So for those who want to replicate, you know, uh, computer game RPGs and things like that, you, you're seeing similarities in the way this is working. Now, even if you're not wanting to replicate that kind of um, computer game feel, video game feel, this is still a really nice way for the DM to organise all of their information ahead of time and then just reveal it as and when. Because clicking on this um, configure permissions here is really quick and easy. Uh, and one of the challenges of the default journal system is what have I shown them? What what have the, what can they see? What can't they see? <laughs> Do I need to change permissions on that? Is it already done? You can see on the left hand side. They can see goals. It's really really obvious what they can and can't see just from here. Now I have in my Strad game, as you will be aware, I've got the um, ownership viewer. I think it's called um, for the journals, which gives me a little symbol to let me know who can see what. This is, this is actually much, much easier. It requires all the setup at the beginning, of course. Um, will I be implementing this in the Curse of Strahd module? No, I won't, For the purely for the reason of I'm quite far through doing that, uh, and I would effectively kind of have to potentially redo it. I don't know. I'll look at it. Um, but there we go. If you're building from scratch again, decide what you want to use before you get going because if you want to use something like this build it direct in here it's going to be much much nicer all right this is called simple quest and we've not even talked about quests yet have we <laughs> our final tab at the top left here is quests and again because this is what ripper does he's given us a simple quest that is the instructions of how it works so just using this as a quest uh, I'm not going to read out every word for you, but what you can see is getting started here. Uh, we've got some tick boxes, and we can tick these off. Did you see that little exclamation mark appear next to the quest because something's changed, right? Um, and there's two objectives. For getting started, there's two objectives. It's my initial objective and a second objective. Now they're both ticked off. All of the objectives in getting started are ticked. So not only does it give me a little exclamation mark and let me know something changed, but it's put a line through getting started. So they know that that's done. we now got some instructions about um, navigating here. Quest list on the left side of the interface. So we can tick these things off, or we can tick the whole lot off. And again, keep your eye on this navigation, uh, navigating the quests tab. As we complete those it crosses off that whole thing so this is just an example of of how it works and you can untick them if you've made a mistake <laughs> which is good doesn't default untick all of the individual sub objectives but that's fine uh, and it's automatically updated this for us so that's great now again at the top right we've got options to uh, open it for the players to delete it to duplicate it to send it to chat to mark the quest as updated to basically give that let's do that again um, it's already got it on there but we can also go in and edit it from here and we can move it so once this is done it's currently in progress we can move it to completed or failed or of course we can create our other ones you know it might be catastrophic failure it might be depending on how they complete different quests might lead to different results in your game world it depends how you set it up so because i often come into these things you know lukewarm at best um i did come in and play with this and i've created myself a quest just to make sure this really does work as simply as i'm expecting um and i created a quest of uh, making a pizza for luigi so first of all they need to collect the ingredients and i've got this sub one here where they need to get flour, they need to visit the jungle of Chult for spices, steal Bowser's magic mixing bowl, and punch Mario just because he deserves a punch sometimes. Uh, some of these purple. Why? If I hover just to the left of this, there's this eye icon. So you can keep some of these objectives hidden. Or they, they might be secret objectives that they may or may not pass without realising it. Maybe there's bonus quest rewards if they do some of the hidden objectives. 
or it might be that they just don't know about some of these objectives yet you know so once they've got the flower from the death mill then they learn about having to go to visit the jungles of chult there we go i can update it um but just like before as i tick these off boom it's ticked off my collect ingredients so that's done uh, once they've done that, they're going to make it, but with no pineapple. That's going to cause a riot in the comments, isn't it? <laughs> pineapple or no pineapple. <laughs> uh, and then deliver the pizza. Here I've given them a choice. They can either deliver the pizza to Luigi, or they can choose to eat it themselves in front of Luigi to enrage him and release his ultimate Hulk form. Now, because this is an either or, I can say, oh yeah, that's what they did. And I can move to say completed. So on my left hand side now, you can see I've got one in progress, that initial rip has won, one completed that's in here. And of course at any time I can you know, click on this to see what's in it, uh, collapse them etc. And I can move them about. It's like, oh well completed, it's like, oh hang on a minute, I, that, I put that in the wrong place. I could just move it to failed. Or actually that's still in progress. And it just moves it back to where it needs to be. How easy is that? I mean it, it's... It's called Simple Quest. I mean, it is so simple. It really is. Now, you're going to say, well, hang on a minute. How the hell did you create this? Yeah, read Ripper's instructions. But if I edit this, and obviously this is a very simple quest. It's just a journal. That's all it is. So if I try and put this to the side of it, so you can see uh, there's my title, collect the ingredients. This is heading two, which creates this heading here. And then every time there's a bullet point, so just using this bullet point thing here, it creates it as a quest objective. It turns the bullet point into a tick box instead for signing off those particular items. Uh, make the pizza. And then I just type this out like this. So again, because it's a quest thing, you can put images, uh, sorry, a, a journal thing. You can absolutely put your images in that you might want. Oh, blimey, let's not put something in quite that large. Um, let's slap that in. Huge, because I didn't set any sizes. Uh, we can just stick that in. And when we save it, we've then also got an image. I put a bullet point next to it. So uh, we can also put images or whatever we want in. So it's actually really easy to set up in the first place to set up your quests it's really because you're just editing journal stuff that's all you're doing it's text-based editor um, it's just doing some really really clever stuff depending on what you put in there so using the bullet points ticking this stuff off um, when you do a tick box you know it's ticking them all off if everything in the section's done it crosses it off over here so yes simple to use simple to understand i don't for one minute suspect it was too simple on the back end of it um but yeah it's all here uh it is your entire adventure campaign campaign world all organized in one place it is brilliant um and i can definitely see that i would use this moving forward with certainly if i am doing campaign worlds now we've built storm wreck isle and we have built uh, Fandelver and Below, both in the Forgotten Realms, uh, and there's so many other adventures built in Forgotten Realms. Well, wouldn't it be great to have this universal, centralised journal system that has the timeline on it, that we get to add other parties' adventures, adventures onto, uh, a more comprehensive set of maps as that will grow as different parties explore different areas. We've got the law that will slowly grow that may or may not be, you know, ghouls might not be. Um, you know, the players might not actually know about the ghouls until they encounter them. So we can turn them off. We can hide them and things like that. Um, there it is just there. So they can't see that one anymore. Um, really, really nice if you're doing a full campaign world, especially if you're doing homebrew where it's all your information and you've got notebooks and documents and <laughs> things all over the place bring it all together uh, what i would say uh, just as a thought for anybody going oh yeah i'd like to do that is consider creating it as your own compendium uh, as your own module a bit like i'm doing with curse of strad but just for this stuff because what it means is is you can put all that together in one module and then if you start a new game world that's based on the same history and everything else you can just import that as a module into your new game world 
and you've already got all your beastery ready to go you've got your maps ready to go your timeline ready to go but you don't need to keep building one game world bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger you know end up with Fandelva um, the Shattered Obelisk the entire adventure series and the whole Stormwreck Isle and all of Ice Spire Peak and you know you'll start to end up with a one huge great big game um, but if you pack this let me close that. Uh, if you pack it so it ends up in a compendium that you can uh, effectively export, it means you can import it into your next game world and ret ret retain all of that information. So, um, a couple of summaries then. Uh, it's not offering much that you can't do anyway with things like the journals and the map, but it's bringing it all together in one place, makes it really simple to use, really easy to see that stuff. It certainly looks much nicer, much, much nicer. Um, it is, so it is one of Ripper's, um, and it is one of his premium ones. So yes, there is a there is a cost associated with that. With that. Um, but if you're building your game world around it, that is well worth it in my opinion. I would like to say, although Ripper knows I'm doing this video, it's not sponsored in any shape, any way shape or form I don't get anything for saying nice things about Ripper I say nice things about Ripper because his work is so good um, and you know if you look in the comments there's always people going oh we love Ripper you know we love his stuff uh, it's just so good um, if it works for your game for your party and what you're trying to achieve of course don't use it if it's not going to help you <laughs> the whole point of these modules is to make your life more uh, to easier as a dm to make your players experience better right i'm going to stop wittering yet again um let me know in the comments what do you think is anybody already using this um is there anything you don't like about it or is there particular things i've missed and you kind of go oh this is you've missed this bit and it's a massive it's a massive function that you really really need to know about let us know in the comments um and if you're not using it and you think actually i'm going to start using it let us know as well as always a like uh describe if you want to love ripper go buy him a coffee he's got his coffee thing which reminds me i've also got one a link to this video if you're feeling generous but i'd rather you gave your money to ripper who's doing all the hard work here um than give it to me but i will never turn down a free cup of tea thank you very much take care see you in the next one